Today's lesson is called Lucerne, the heart of Switzerland. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. And my name is Roger, and welcome to the merry month of August. And of course, as you know, August is one of the hottest times to be in Taiwan. So maybe you might be thinking about going someplace cool as the summer winds down and you're getting ready to get back to school. So maybe you want to consider going high in the mountains. I mean, gee, could you go to say Nepal or something like that, or maybe a Honshu in Japan? But hey, a really nice place that you might consider going would be Switzerland. They're in the Alps. They're high in the mountains. I bet it's nice and cool there, especially in the city of Lucerne. Yeah. Now that you mention it, it is August. It's super hot outside.、Hmm. Uh, travel to the Swiss Alps sounds pretty, pretty good. But forget the Alps for now. Let's talk about the city of Lucerne. Apparently, it's the heart of Switzerland. So if you go to Switzerland, sure, Bern is great, Geneva is great. But if you don't go to Lucerne, you will have missed out on something really important. You will have missed out on the heart. Of Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland. I think you guys know of this country. If not, know this: Switzerland produces some of the finest watches on earth, some of the best chocolate on earth, and it's probably produced the greatest tennis player of all time, a guy named Roger Federer. Yes, these are three Swiss things that everyone in the world probably knows a little bit about. But do they know about Lucerne? Probably not, but we're going to remedy that today and the day after today. Yes, we're going to be talking about Lucerne, the heart of Switzerland, over the next couple of days. So, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. Lucerne, the heart of Switzerland. Switzerland has many beautiful cities, but at its heart is the particularly lovely city of Lucerne. Many of the city's points of interest are close to one another, so it's easy to tour on foot. Located near mountains and on the shore of a large lake, Lucerne is also a great starting point for outdoor enthusiasts. 大家好，第一部分我们看到的单字 outdoor 这个字是形容词，指户外的、露天的。例如。Julia went to a play that was held in an outdoor theater. Julia 去看了一场在露天剧院演出的戏。另外，补充一个同义的单词 ，open air。我们可以说 ，While popular in Taiwan, open air markets are unfamiliar to many Westerners. 露天市场虽然在台湾很流行，但很多西方人却对此不熟悉。接着，我们看到一个名词 enthusiast， 指热衷者、爱好者。像是 classic car enthusiasts have one of the most expensive hobbies in the world。古董车爱好者的兴趣是世界上花费最高的。另外，在 enthusiast 字尾加上 i c， 则可以成为它的形容词 enthusiastic， 指热情的、热烈的。所以可以说。The company hired several enthusiastic young programmers. 公司雇佣了几位热情的年轻城市设计师。Okay, everybody. So if you haven't figured it out yet, we're going to Switzerland in today's program, specifically to the central part of Switzerland. So if you talk about the middle part of something or the central part, you can say the heart of a certain place. So Lucerne is in central Switzerland, so it's the heart of Switzerland. But also, the word "heart" here could mean the soul or the spirit of a place. So indeed, the heart of Switzerland could be considered to be Lucerne, just like. Here in Taiwan, the town of Puli in Nanto could be the heart of Taiwan. I've heard people say that、uh, Puli has really beautiful women there, and every time I go to Puli, I must heartily agree with that assessment. But here, of course, we're not in Puli; we are in Switzerland. We're in Lucerne, which is in the heart of Switzerland. Yes, there is something essential about Lucerne when it comes to Switzerland. If you visit Switzerland and you don't go to Lucerne, you 
you will have missed out on something that makes Switzerland great. Go there, everyone, if you go to Switzerland. Anyways, folks, let's go ahead and get started. During the introduction, I mentioned a couple of Swiss cities. You've got Geneva, you've got Bern, but you also have Lucerne. Yes, Switzerland has many beautiful cities, but at its heart is the particularly lovely city of Lucerne. Indeed, that's in the heart of Switzerland, and many of the city's points of interest are close to one another, so it's easy to tour on foot. You could say that all of those points of interest are within walking distance. You don't need to make any special arrangements to see those points of interest, which are, of course, places that you might want to go and check out. In Europe, of course, it could be a museum. Or an old church, or something like that, or an old cobblestone street, or a square, or a plaza, or something with a big statue. Yes, indeed, these are the points of interest in Lucerne that are very close together. Yep, so they're close together, and that means you won't have to travel very far to get one place. To another, to get from one place to another, I should say. So yes, many of the city's points of interest are located close to one another. So it's easy to tour on foot. You won't have to rent a car. You might not even have to rent a bike. You can walk around the city and see everything there is to see without much problem. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on. The next sentence says, located near mountains and on the shore of a large lake. Lucerne is also a great starting point for outdoor enthusiasts, and we'll learn that yes, if you want to go see the Alps, Lucerne is a good place to start from. So maybe it's not in the Alps, but you can access the Alps quite easily from Lucerne. So yes, we're not going to get rid of the Alps entirely. We will be talking about the Alps a little bit in our lesson, but not quite yet. Anyways, yes, Lucerne is located near some mountains and. On the shore of a large, beautiful lake, so that's pretty awesome. And it also means that Lucerne is going to be a great starting point for people like hikers, people who like to do stuff in the outdoors. Yes, by the way, hiking is an example of an outdoor activity, but it's not the only outdoor activity there is. But here, yes, the word outdoor, okay, it refers to something that you do not inside or not. Indoor, so outdoor activities are activities that you do outside. Things like hiking, so on and so forth. And yes, if you are an outdoor enthusiast, you are enthusiastic about doing these outdoor activities. So yeah, if you like hiking, if you like the great outdoors, then Lucerne is a great place to start. Your outdoor activities. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first. One of Lucerne's most famous spots is the 14th-century Chapel Bridge, which runs across the Reuss. Walking on the covered bridge, you can see colorful paintings of scenes from Lucerne's history on triangle-shaped panels attached to the bridge's rafters. The bridge was damaged by a fire in 1993, but has since been restored. The second part, we see the word "attach." 这个字是动词，有附上、装上或贴上的意思。举例来说 ，I attached a few recent photos of me and my friends when I sent my family a letter. 我在寄信回家时附上几张近期与朋友的合照。另外，常用 attach something to 加名词来表示将某事物与另一个事物相接。所以我们可以说。Using a metal clip, the hiker attached a water bottle to her backpack. 登山者使用金属夹将水瓶系在她的背包上。接下来，我们看到一个名词 rafter， 指支撑屋顶的船。例如 ，Most houses on the island still have the traditional rafter. 在那岛上的大部分房子都还拥有传统屋船。另外，补充一个常用的片语。Packed to the rafters 可以用来比喻塞满或堆满。我们可以说 ，The store is packed to the rafters with strange imported items. 这间店堆满了奇怪的进口商品。Okay, folks, we're back and we're still talking about Lucerne. 
the heart of Switzerland. Let's move on. The second paragraph of our lesson says, One of Lucerne's most famous spots is the 14th century chapel bridge, which runs across the Royce. So there we go. We are starting off well, okay, on our trip here in Lucerne in our minds. The first place we're going to visit is a very famous spot to be found there in Lucerne. It's called Chapel Bridge. And get this, this bridge dates back to the 14th century. That means it was built way back in the 1300s. So it's an old bridge. And of course, it goes across the Royce River. Now, walking on the covered bridge, you can see colorful paintings of scenes from Lucerne's history on triangle-shaped panels attached to the bridge's rafters. Okay, so first of all, the Royce River there is where the Chapel Bridge is. It crosses that river, and if you cross that river there on this bridge, it's a covered bridge, you will discover. Covered means it's covered by a roof or something like that. It's not an open bridge like most bridges are. And of course, they'll have these paintings of Lucerne's history, but they're painted on these panels that are not rectangular, but they're triangle shaped, okay, with just three sides there. A panel, of course, is a flat surface that can be used for all sorts of things. You can put panels on the walls in your house, for example, panels of wood to decorate the walls or something like that. That is also called wood paneling. But here, these are panels that are attached to the rafters of the bridge, which are those little pieces of wood or whatever over the bridge that hold up the roof. There you go. And they have made a point here of saying that these panels are triangle shaped because like Roger said, usually panels are kind of rectangular in shape. Anyways, more about the 14th century Chapel Bridge. Get this. The bridge was damaged by a fire in 1993, but has since been restored. So yes, Chapel Bridge almost burned down in 1993. The bridge was damaged by a fire in 1993. But it's okay now. It has since been restored. It was restored since this fire struck it in 1993. By the way, to restore something is kind of bring something back, to reestablish something, to fix that thing. So, yes, the bridge almost burned down, but they fixed it up, and now it looks as good as new. Right. Uh, numerous temples here in Taiwan have had fires or have been destroyed. So later on, they rebuild them or they repair them. So the temples have been restored. And of course, as you know, they're trying to restore Notre Dame in Paris after the fire that occurred there earlier this year. So yes, this bridge here has been restored. So you can see those paintings again. It's probably pretty cool. Okay, let's move on now to the next part of our lesson. We'll listen to it first. These are some more sites that you can see in Lucerne. Another interesting site is the Twin Towered Church of St. Leodegar. Although its magnificent gold altars won't go unnoticed, this Renaissance church is probably best known for its huge pipe organ, which can even produce the sounds of rain and thunder. Visitors shouldn't leave Lucerne without seeing the Lion Monument. This beautiful relief of a dying lion is carved into a rock face, and it honors the hundreds of Swiss guards who died while protecting King Louis XVI in 1792. India's Taj Mahal is a magnificent architectural structure attracting tourists year-round. Altar 指教堂内的圣坛,祭坛 像是 To complete the ritual, place the candle on the altar 为了完成那个仪式, 把蜡烛放到圣坛上 最后,我们看到一个片语 Be known for 加名词 代表以点点点而闻名 片语后面所接的名词通常为某个特点,长处 例如 this bakery is known for its excellent cupcakes. 这间面包店以其美味的杯子蛋糕闻名。另外,补充另外一个片语, 
be known as 加名词，可以用来指称作点点点，以某个身份称号而闻名。我们可以说 Einstein is known as one of the smartest people who ever lived. 爱因斯坦被称作史上最聪明的人之一。Okay, before the break, we talked about Chapel Bridge. Now, it didn't sound to me like Chapel Bridge was actually a chapel. Okay, a chapel is usually like a small church. So, if any of you feel like you've been shortchanged, oh my goodness, the Chapel Bridge wasn't really a chapel. Well, don't worry. If you guys feel shortchanged, we do have a church coming up for you next. And in fact, it's not even a chapel. It's quite a big church. Yes, in Lucerne, another interesting site. Is the Twin Tower Church of Saint Leodegar, and yes, here we've got a Twin Tower Church. That means there are two towers on this church, and the two towers look the same. Yeah, the、uh, Patronus、uh, Building in Kuala Lumpur is a twin-towered skyscraper. It's got two towers there. So here in Lucerne, they've got a church that has two towers. Hence, Twin Towered Church. Although its magnificent gold altars won't go unnoticed, this Renaissance church is probably best known for its huge pipe organ, which can even produce the sounds of rain and thunder. Now that's got to be cool—a pipe organ, an organ that has pipes, and it's not an electric organ that you might see in a church or something. This one's got huge pipes, just like at the National Concert Hall here in Taipei. They've got a big pipe organ there. It's really big at the back of the stage. There, so this church is known for that pipe organ, but、uh, of course, at the beginning here, we're talking about the magnificent gold altars. Those won't go unnoticed, you know. Those are pretty cool, but the main attraction here is the pipe organ. That's what this church is best known for. It's not even best known for these twin towers that it has. No, no, no. The church is probably best known for this huge. Pipe organ. This pipe organ is what has made this church famous. Yes, if something is known for something, that's what it's famous for. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. The next sentence says, "Visitors shouldn't leave Lucerne without seeing the Lion Monument." Okay, so once you've seen Chapel Bridge and the Church of Saint Leodegar, make sure you. Don't miss out on the Lion Monument. If you're a visitor to Lucerne, if you are a tourist there, make sure you see this monument. Indeed, a monument, and of course, it's a relief here. So this beautiful relief of a dying lion is carved into a rock face, and it honors the hundreds of Swiss guards who died. While protecting King Louis the Sixteenth in 1792, that was about the time of the French Revolution. So, of course, here this is a lion monument, but it's not an actual statue or a three-dimensional work of art. It's a relief, which is basically a flat carving, but part of it kind of sticks out, or maybe part of it actually sinks in to the rock. But it still kind of looks like a 3D picture, but it's a relief. Of a dying lion, and it's carved into the surface of a rock, the rock face. So, carved here means people have taken special tools and they've cut out part of the rock in order to make this. Relief here, unlike、uh, of course Mount Rushmore in the United States, that's not a relief, but the、uh, portraits of those U.S. presidents are carved into a rock face in South Dakota. Exactly, that's Mount Rushmore that you're talking about there. Yes, I believe that Michelangelo's David was carved out of a single piece of marble. Yeah, Michelangelo saw this piece of marble and he knew exactly what to do with it. He turned that piece of marble into one of the best. Statues in the Western world. There. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on and talk about the next vocabulary word. It's the verb honor. Okay. It says here that this monument honors the hundreds of Swiss guards who died while protecting this particular king. Yes. If you honor someone like that, you kind of pay tribute to them. You commemorate them. You remember them. You kind of praise them. Yes. If you honor someone, you show them respect in public, or you express your admiration for them. 
publicly. So here, this monument, it's there to pay tribute to these very brave people who died while protecting King Louis the Sixteenth. And honor here is a verb, but it could also be a noun. Like if you remember when Santa Claus said, "Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight?" And Rudolph said, "It will be an honor, sir. It will be my pleasure to do that for you." In that case, honor is a noun. It will be my honor. But here again, it's being used as a verb. Santa Claus, you honor me with that request. Rudolph could have said that as well if he used the word as. A verb. Very much so. Yes, he could have done that as well. So yes, this is probably something to check out. That Lion Monument, among the other sights and sounds of Lucerne, you are going to have one heck of a trip there in Switzerland. Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Let's listen now once again to our Chinese teacher. Located near mountains and on the shore of a large lake, Lucerne is also a great starting point. For outdoor enthusiasts, 好，这个句子里面我们看到没有连接词，然后前半句它又是用分词 located 开头。好，这就表示它有使用到分词构句。当我们用对等连接词 and 去连接两个主词相同的子句的时候呢，你就可以省略 and 还有其中一个主词。好，我们就把那个省略主词后面的动词改成分词，这样就会形成分词构句了。好，那要改什么样的分词呢？当动词它是主动，我们就用现在分词；被动就用过去分词。像课文的句子本来可以写作 ：Lucerne is located near mountains and on the shore of a large lake. And Lucerne is also a great starting point for outdoor enthusiasts. 有没有看到它是 Lucerne is located 什么什么 ？And Lucerne is also 怎么样怎么样？好，前后子句是一样的，我们就把连接词 and 省略，然后把前半句的主词省略。再把后面的 is 改成现在分词 being， 就会变成 being located 什么什么。Lucerne is also 什么什么。好，不过 being 常常被省略不用哦，那就会变成课文的句子了。再来看到课文第二部分，它在介绍卡佩尔教堂桥。那这个段落我们又用到两个复合形容词，一个是 fourteenth century。它表示十四世纪的，还有一个是 triangle shaped， 表示三角形的。好，那我们在课文第三部分一开始也看到一个复合形容词是 twin towered， 那这是用来形容圣莱奥德加尔教堂，它是双塔的 twin towered， 它表示双塔的。好，那我们就顺便来学一些常见的复合形容词组合方式哦。第一种呢是用数字加上名词。那要特别注意，这种组合里面的名词，它一律用单数表示，像 four year 不是 four years， 是 four year， 这表示四年的。Five star 表示五星级的。那我们也可以用序数加上名词来构成复合形容词，像课文里面的 fourteenth century， 十四世纪的，或是像 seventh grade， 表示七年级的。第二种，我们用数字加上名词，但是名词的后面再加上 ed， 好像 three legged 表示三条腿的 ，two sided 表示双面的。那么第三种，我们用形容词加上名词，像 long term 表示长期的 ，part time 表示兼职的。那么第五种，我们用形容词加上名词，那么名词后面再加上 ed， 像课文里面的 twin towered， 或者是像 big eyed 大眼睛的 ，short haired 表示短发的。好，那么第五种呢，我们用名词搭配名词，那么第二个名词后面加 ed， 像课文里面的 triangle 是名词，后面搭配 shaped。
shape 后面是 e d 结尾，所以就变成三角形的。还有像 self centered 表示自我中心的。好，其他还有呢，搭配分词构成的复合形容词，像是名词搭配现在分词 eye catching。那就是形容引人注目的，还有名词搭配过去分词，像 man-made 表示人工的，也可以用形容词搭配现在分词 good-looking 表示好看的，形容词搭配过去分词，像 clean-shaven 梳洗干净的，还有副词也可以搭配分词哦，副词搭配现在分词，像 fast-growing 表示成长快速的。副词搭配过去分词，像 well known 表示为人所知的。那同学们可以试着用笔记本整理这些复合形容词哦。以上是今天重点整理，我们来回顾今天的单词吧。Outdoor. Our club organizes outdoor activities such as hiking and camping trips. Panel. Several of the wooden fence panels are damaged and need to be replaced. Attach. Donovan attached a note to the gift before leaving it on his coworker's desk. Restore. Melanie and Peter buy old houses, restore them, and then sell them at a profit. Magnificent. Shelley has always dreamed of seeing Venice's magnificent historical buildings. Carve. Italian artist Michelangelo carved his famous David statue out of marble. Honor. The U.S. military honors soldiers who were wounded or killed during service with a Purple Heart Medal. 